Okay, so by now uh, you should have your router plugged in. Um, it's your choice whether you want to connect via uh, Ethernet or Cat5 cable or via wireless connection. I'm going to do mine via wireless just because it's easier for this example. Um, if you do it by, by wireless, uh, you'll have to go in through your uh, wireless connection wizard or whatever you have um, and choose the default device name, which is for mine, it's Cisco 06208. And then in your browser, you'll type HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.1.1. Then it'll prompt you for a username and password. By default, this is admin and admin. Um, most of the notorious people out there, are people that are attempting to steal your internet connection, um, are smart enough to realize that this is the default password for most Linksys devices. Um, it's also relatively similar for other devices like Netgear, etc. Um, so the first thing that we'll want to do is pop into the administration section um, and change that router password. So you can go ahead and do this. Um, I like to use a fairly complex system, capital letters, lowercase letters, numbers, um, et cetera, et cetera. Once you're done doing the router password, we're going to change the local management access via HTTP uh, to HTTPS. One of the things uh, or one of the reasons why we're doing this is because it's a little bit more secure. Uh, all the stuff isn't really passed back and forth in plain text. So if somebody was already on your network and you were making changes and logging into your router, they could easily sniff this password out. Um, and we're just going to make them a little make it a little bit harder for them to do so. Um, access via wireless. This is actually a really good feature that Linksys put into their uh, routers. Generally, if, if you're connecting um, to your router via Cat5 cable, you can go ahead and set this now. But since I'm doing everything wireless, I'm going to leave it enabled. Um, maybe in the future uh, or once I'm done setting everything up, I'll go ahead and disable this and keep a Cat5 cable next to my router. So if I have to make any additional changes in the future, I can just do that locally on the router itself and not via the internet certainly this protects you and it also makes it a little bit harder for you to make um, changes so that's up for you to decide everything else we're just going to leave as default and just click on save changes okay so now you notice after you hit save changes that the 192.168 address up in the top corner there is now HTTPS so you'll have to type that in every time with the S and you'll get this connection is untrusted error uh, but I understand the risk I'm gonna add the exception um, there's a perfectly good reason for why it's giving you this error but I'm not gonna go into technical stuff right now we're just gonna get you set up um, so now the username will type that in it's still admin unfortunately Linksys doesn't have a way for us to change um, the username unless we get into some really um, advanced techniques but and then type in the new password um, that's required so the next thing we'll do um, we'll go on to the wireless section of it because that's also the section that we're going to use the most probably um, they give you an option here for the basic wireless setting. The Wi-Fi protected setup is actually a good idea. Unfortunately for me, my router is in the basement and I'm upstairs, so it's not a really easy task for me to go down and hit the sync button every time I need to connect a new device. And it's not easy for me to go ahead and remember this pin number that they give me. So I prefer like the manual way of, of setting things up and not even using the Wi-Fi protected setup. But um, if it's easier for you, then go right ahead and use it by all means. Um, but I'll still show you the manual way. So what we're given here um, is basically an option to change the network name, which is what I'm going to do. Um, I choose, I try to choose stuff that's a little bit less conspicuous to what my neighbors use. Um, a lot of them tend to use their last names, which isn't a good idea. Uh, at least I don't recommend it. I can't really think of any reasons other than like, why would you use that? Uh, but certainly you're, you're a lot more identifiable. Um, for now, or for this example, I'll just name it Big Truck. And if you're confused by the 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz wireless settings, um, don't worry about it. Just set them both the same. It's okay. And then go ahead and hit save settings. So you'll notice now that it uh, temporarily kicked you off for whatever reason. And that's because uh, obviously our, our wireless connection name has changed from the default Cisco 06208. And it should show up in our Wi-Fi connections list as big truck. 
and as soon as you connect to it it should automatically forward you back to where you came from but if it doesn't um, you can go ahead and type in the HTTPS 192.168.1.1 again um, and it'll bring you back to where you were the next thing we're gonna do is go in here and set up the wireless security end of it um, because you'll notice in this drop down list you know all these people have a nice little lock by their thing and I don't and I don't even know why there's two big trucks showing up here but did I did I make a Maybe I did. Big truck and big truck. Yes, I did. Um, so that's another thing you can consider. Uh, if you if you do, you all just have to remember which one's a 2.4 and which one's 5 gigahertz spectrum. Um, it doesn't really matter either way. I just keep them the same. Um, it's it's preference basically if you have 2.4 gigahertz wireless phones um, in your house you might want to use the 5 gigahertz wireless spectrum instead of the uh, 2.4 because it'd be on the same frequency and I don't even know if I'm saying spectrum um, technically correctly in this situation but either way um, you should understand that okay so back to wireless security where I wanted to be to begin with so we don't have um, this lock showing up in our wireless networks and I kind of really want it to be secure so we're going to choose a security mode for both the 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum um, which by the way if you do have interference caused by wireless phones uh, you can totally turn the 2.4 gigahertz wireless network um, settings off so uh, you might want to think about doing that if you get a lot of interference with your phones Anyway, um, usually what I like to choose is WPA2, uh, the personal, the enterprise is kind of like, you know, for a network that actually has a dedicated server. Um, and then it'll ask you cho to choose a passphrase for both uh, gigahertz wireless, um, I don't know, frequencies. So, I don't know, I'll just use Big Truck again for this as a demonstrational thing. Obviously, you don't want to keep uh, your. Uh, connection name and your passphrase the same that's a pretty like not good thing to do um, so generally pick a different thing uppercase lowercase you know something that's easy to remember the other thing too um, is that if you have a lot of people and a lot of visitors over at your house you don't really want to give them um, a lot of technical information about your wireless setup I mean you could it's okay it's up to you and if you trust the person that's one thing um, but unfortunately in, in this scenario I'm probably more apt to create a guest network which I'll show you how to do in another video um, that your friends can come in and log into and it keeps your information and their information basically on two separate networks anyway so for now we'll just save settings uh, you want to choose WPA2 personal uh, not WPA obviously WPA2 is stronger um, and WEP isn't even a question don't even don't even select it it's the easiest one to crack for from a hacking standpoint um, and we'll just save settings here and be done with that and once again you'll see that it boots us off the network but only for a good reason because now big truck our network um, has a lock on it which is a good thing so now people know that it's secure and we'll just reconnect to it like we normally would um, it should ask you for a password. If it doesn't, um, I might have connected to it before trying to record this video. I don't even remember. Um, but it should, and that should just be your password from now on. Uh, the wireless Mac filter and advanced wireless settings, we're just going to keep those as, as defaults. And you know, maybe in a later video, I'll show you a little bit more advanced stuff, how to boost your signal and all that stuff. Um, but for now, that's pretty much about it. There's a couple OCD things. Um, that I take care of usually uh, if you pop into setup I usually end up changing the device name here just because I don't like the default one and I usually end up changing the maximum number of users from 50 to something around like 10 it all depends on how many devices so when they say users they don't exactly mean like physical people they just mean literally if you have a cell phone a printer and a computer those are three users basically on your network so um, I usually take a rough estimate count. Uh, I think I have about seven or eight devices. So I usually end up putting 10 in here um, and then also setting the time settings. And the only reason I get in the habit of setting time zones is because if you deal with a lot of Microsoft products and servers in general, um, you're gonna find out that it relies very, very much on time. And if you're at least like a minute to three minutes off, it just throws everything out of whack. So it's a good idea to get into the habit of doing that. Uh, there's some other settings in here. I'll briefly touch on them, uh, but I won't go through them. 
access restrictions. If you have um, kids or, you know, for whatever reason you want to restrict the internet access, maybe because you're an internet addict and uh, you want to prevent yourself, even though I don't know how much that would work unless you told somebody else your password and they changed it or something. I don't know. Anyway, but uh, if you want to go in here and restrict access to your kids, maybe if it's a school night Monday through Friday or Monday through Thursday and limit the internet access so as soon as they come home from school, you know, you want them to do homework, this is a pretty good method, I guess. Or if you want certain websites blocked, you can type them in here, um, blocking websites by keyword, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But the point of the matter is, is if your kid is smart enough um, to certainly log into the wireless network, you know, and, and they play around a lot on the computer, um, they can certainly Google how to get around this stuff. It's it's not really hard. It's not really meant to be, you know, the be all end all result. Um, and if it gets to be a problem, honestly, just just shut the internet off. You know, there's no point in in wasting time when half the time your kid is smarter than you are with this stuff. <laughs> Anyway, um, but speaking of kids, uh, games and all that stuff, there's also applications in gaming. This is where you'd set up port forwarding. If you have no clue about port forwarding or you're not a gamer, don't even worry about this. Uh, basically, if, if you're a gamer and you need to worry about this, your video game is going to give you some kind of error, some kind of instruction with regards to what ports needed to be forwarded um, on your router. And basically, you would go on the computer or the device uh, that has the internet connection that has the game um, and you would get the IP address off that device and then put the ports that need to be forwarded in here um, and then obviously you would choose either both TCP or UDP um, once again the game will specify what settings need to be set this is just the area that you can do that and of course there's all other stuff here that you can choose uh, DMZ if I go into that it, it's pretty much just you're not on a network you're kind of off to the side of a network when I was talking about a guest network this is pretty much the place um, that we create a guest network and basically that's just so that you know anybody that connects to it um, they're not technically on your network they're just off to the side so creating two separate networks um, one is more vulnerable it, it technically sits like right on the internet um, it's more vulnerable to attack than anything behind your router but that might be a little too advanced. So by this point, you should be all set up, ready to go, um, passwords changed, devices secure, you can go ahead and plug your modem into the internet and begin surfing the web.